Welcome to this Sigma Older seminar series. Today's topic is on data analysis guidelines. My name is Anders Bergqvist. We distinguish between three different types of data analysis application. This presentation will be an overview and subsequent seminars will go into more detail on each data analysis application. The majority of the presentation will focus on the relative quantification type of data analysis. Key concepts are confirmatory and exploratory analysis. A natural extension of relative quantification includes multivariate data analysis and this will form the boundary of today's presentation. First application in our presentation is absolute quantification. Standard curve data is obtained from a dilution series of a standard sample. The standard curve is then plotted in a graph with CQ values on the y-axis and the logarithm of the dilution samples on the x-axis. We can determine absolute quantities in unknown sample by tracing measured CQ values and matching them to corresponding absolute quantities on the standard curve. Absolute quantification has applications, for example, to measure quantities of genetic modified organism or pathogen content in foodstuff. In many cases, a standard sample is not available. For those applications, we may instead use relative quantification. Samples are divided into two groups, such as untreated normal controls and treated. Mean gene expression and variations are measured within each group, and the differences between the means of the groups is evaluated. Statistical tests are available to accomplish this comparison and arrive at statistically significant results. In this presentation, we will look into some more detail of the principles of statistical analysis. As we will see later in this presentation, statistical tests perform poorly if we are analyzing many genes and samples and many classification groups at the same time. This leads us to the third application, which is expression profiling. In this application, we explore the data for trends and patterns. Statistical rigor is less important. It's more important to characterize and identify previously unknown properties of the data. Methods that are used in this application include hierarchical clustering, regular line plots, and principal component analysis. The main focus of this presentation will be on principles of statistical analysis. Statistical analysis is a natural aspect of relative quantification, so before we proceed, we need to define the basic premises of relative quantification. First of all, we analyze one gene at a time. We measure expression of this gene into two different groups that have been sampled from two different populations, such as from untreated normal control group and from a treated group. It is often not economical or practically possible to sample the whole population from each group, and that is the reason that we obtain samples. Statistical analysis will be necessary to draw reliable conclusions from these limited samples. We have variations within each sample group. In addition, handling and processing often involve unknown mechanisms that contribute to confounding variabilities. Pre-processing and statistical analysis will be necessary to handle these different contributions to data variability. The key to statistical analysis is the sampling. We obtain limited samples of each group, but we want to draw conclusions about the whole populations. We want samples to be representative the entire population. It is therefore important that sampling is random over the entire population. One illustrative anecdote is one where a researcher that had a peculiar problem. He wanted to test the effect of different drugs on a particular gene in mice. The problem was he always got significant results, no matter what drug he tested. It didn't seem realistic. A biostatistician was brought in as a consultant and quickly noticed that the negative control mice were always bred in a cage in the back corner of the lab, whereas the treated mice were always bred in a cage near the window of the lab. This is an example where mice were not randomly sampled from the lab space, and the observed effect was due to an undesired systematic sampling bias rather than due to a real treatment effect. Before we obtain measurements from our samples, we need to handle and process them in various ways. In this process, variabilities are introduced. Technical variabilities like these may obscure the treatment distinctions that we want to observe, and we therefore desire to minimize these confounding variabilities. For this and other reasons, we use replicates. Several other types of corrections and calibrations may also help to minimize confounding variabilities. Details of the pre-processing process are described in the GIT laboratory journal reference. 
Once we have data collected and pre-processed, it's time for the data analysis. A bar diagram, as shown in the bottom right-hand corner, is a convenient way to illustrate the mean value and variation of groups of samples. The mean is indicated by the bar height. As we see in this case, there seem to be a difference between the means of the two groups. The variations are indicated by error bars. Variability in our data calls into question whether the difference we observe is real or just due to random variation. To test the significance of an observed difference, we perform a statistical test. Different types of statistical tests are available. The statistical tests produce a p-value between 0 and 1 that is an indicator of the test significance. A lower p-value indicates higher significance, but the precise cutoff for significance depends on the criteria defined during the experimental design. An example of how significance criteria will need to be adjusted according to the experimental design conditions is illustrated by the following. Suppose that we want to detect whether a given dice is crooked. We may define a test that involves rolling the dice three times and the criteria that if it comes up with sixes all three times, it is crooked. This may seem to be a reasonable criteria. However, then imagine that the test is for 100 dice in this way. Chances are then pretty overwhelming that some true dice will come up with sixes all three rolls purely by chance. This is a problem of multiple testing. It is very important to be aware of this problem and adjust criteria for significance accordingly. Let's summarize statistical analysis for relative quantification. We start with a hypothesis, we collect data, then we perform tests and we reject or accept the hypothesis based on predetermined criteria. We call this a confirmatory study. This kind of analysis is useful for expression analysis purposes as well, although we will need to watch out for multiple testing issues, as we will see shortly. In many cases, we don't have a clearly defined hypothesis at the outset of our study. So we just collect data and analyze according to a tentative initial hypothesis. Then we determine whether it's statistically valid or not. If it's not valid, we may go back and define a new, different hypothesis and we keep going through this in the cycles. What we're actually doing here is multiple testing, and if we're not aware of that, we may unintentionally fail to correct our validation criteria and draw statistically incorrect conclusions. Hypothesis rejection or acceptance becomes unreliable. On the other hand, this may still be a useful process for generating hypotheses. We can analyze the data and find trends that look interesting and that yield hypotheses that we can later validate in subsequent studies. This we call an exploratory study. And this type of study we can then use in a complete study, an exploratory study together with a confirmatory study, where we generate hypotheses in the exploratory phase and then validate them in the confirmatory phase. Remember that a new data set needs to be collected for the confirmatory study because a confirmatory study on the same data set used to generate hypotheses will of course confirm the hypothesis. So a complete statistical analysis is composed of an exploratory and a confirmatory phase. An exploratory study is the center of our activities when we perform expression profiling. We analyze the data looking for trends, looking for patterns in the data. What we find we can later use to define a specific hypothesis, collect new data and confirm it in separate statistical tests. Many different methods are available to explore the data and to generate hypotheses. Keep in mind that our intention is to generate hypotheses. We can use any method to generate hypotheses. Some examples of methods that are available to us include hierarchical clustering, Pearson and Spearman correlation analysis and principal component analysis. In this presentation, we have introduced three different types of qPCR data analysis, absolute quantification, relative quantification, and expression profiling. We have referred to techniques to reduce confounding variabilities and talked about why this is desirable. And we talked about how we can quantify significance by using p-values. We talked about some of the dangers with multiple testing, and we described the appropriate ways of using exploratory and confirmatory studies. 
Consult Sigma Experimental Design and Data Analysis at www.sigma.com slash designmyprobe for additional support and answers to direct questions. We enjoy being a small part of your scientific project and we offer free personal advice on many QPCR topics. We have online tools available directly at our site and we can also perform personalized services for you. We are happy to assist you regardless of what project you are using at the moment. While planning future experiments, have you considered Sigma's range of QPCR reagents and kits? Use a combination of Sigma services and product for guaranteed success. This was a brief introduction to data analysis. I hope you enjoyed it. Look out for more presentations in the Sigma Aldrich series. Thank you for your attention.